Hi guys, it's Hot Mess Mama. It is Friday and it is wine time. Woohoo! So I hope you're ready for tonight's tasting. I've got my friend here with us and we are going to be, well, she has um, made some cameo appearances before. Um, and we are going to be tasting uh, wines with breakfast cereals. I know that sounds a little bit unconventional and people are like, well, what? Do you like just eat the cereal dry or do you eat it with milk? And let's just say that you could do it either or. But um, I have done a little bit of research because, you know, we're trying to make, we don't want to make fun or make you know, or anything like that. Because, you know, wine tasting is, it's not a joke. It's very serious. It's very oh, serious. serious. It's so not a joke. It's serious business, it's, especially if you're I'm just trying the camera so this poor girl doesn't have to lean like a, like a cholo. So, <laughs> so we are uh, pairing a whole bunch of stuff and, and I, I almost don't even remember what it is that we're pairing anymore, but at this point I, I don't even really care. We are, because it's a Friday, and I, if any of you have been watching my Facebook Lives, you'll know that it's been, it's been an interesting week, so I think we're kind of celebrating, and I still need your help on this, so, okay, I had to take my hair down because the bun wasn't right. The bun wasn't right, and you know it's all about the bun, right? Okay, so, we are going to pair first and foremost, so get your, whatever you're drinking, get it ready. We are going to be drinking a Riesling. Okay, I just want to show this to everybody. See this? This is a bowl of Lucky Charms that my daughter just brought me. Do you notice anything? Did anything magically delicious disappear from the bowl? Mm, where's the marshmallow? Every single marshmallow has gone out of this bowl. Mm. Has she eaten any of the cereal? She'll be coming back to me for more marshmallows in a little bit. We don't have a babysitter tonight, but we only have one kid screaming in the house. It'll be my daughter, and hopefully... Elena Vavilo will keep her entertained. Anyways, okay, so this is you because you're going to be right up. Okay, we are going to be we are going to be tasting tonight a Riesling. I don't care what kind of Riesling you want. And I don't know about you. I know you like Rieslings. Mm -hmm. I like to have my Riesling super cold. Yeah. But like, I don't want to put an ice cube in it and dilute it and make it not good, right? So get your big glass, girl. Get a big girl glass. Okay, so we're gonna drink. It's, I didn't get a chance to chill it as cold as I would have liked, um, but it is cold. And I don't want to put an ice cube in it to dilute it. But you know what? There's a, here's a good wine hack for you. That's water. Yeah, it's water. That's water. It's water. It's water. It's mommy water. Um, good wine hack for you. I don't know if, I, if I've never shared this before, that you can actually freeze grapes and Ooh. throw the grapes in your wine like ice cubes and that way it won't dilute your wine but it will good idea. keep it chilled I, like I can see her circling the table she's like hawk looking for those marshmallows oh who's joining us oh we got somebody on i don't know who it is but they're viewing say hello make a comment so we know who you are and, and that you're not some creepy guy stalking me from south africa or something okay so <laughs> what um the research that i've done um and there have been some pretty high end um small years which are uh you know professional wine tasters who is that Kelly! Oh, that's, my, that's my sister-in-law, Kelly. Well, not, not officially, but she's my sister-in-law, my heart. Um, so, some very high-powered... She will not let the Lucky Charms go. Okay, I will give you a bucket of marshmallows. Just come over here. Um, they were like, you know what? We have done tons of wine tastings. And we have... You know, then at the end of the wine tasting, we're starving and we're wanting to eat dinner. And we just sit there and eat a bowl of cereal. And we thought to ourselves, huh. This could be, this could be something good, right? This could, there you go. This could be something good. Don't come back to me anymore. This could be the start of something good. So they, um, they did it and they're like, it, it's really interesting to watch them because I don't know if you've ever seen someone do a professional wine tasting, but they don't actually drink the wine, which I think is, I know that that's how you're supposed to taste it and get your palate and get the whole experience of like, mm -hmm. you're, you're being able to smell it, breathe it, taste it, use all of your senses is that you basically put them out, um, like you put, you take a sip swish around your mouth like Listerine, and then you spit it out in a bucket or a spittoon, and you just kind of taste whatever was coating your mouth. And that's supposed to get in like, they, they kind of do this. Okay, I'll show you. It's kind of weird. This is a reason. Then they spit it, and there's residual, like a, to air it. Then they swish it and then they spit it so that they have just this residual that's coating their mouth. Right? So, 
What does she have now? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay. Um, so that's how they taste. And so what this guy was doing was, he was like, literally, I saw him tasting the cereals. It was pretty hysterical. Because what he would do is he would like pour a bowl of cereal with milk. He'd shovel in a whole bunch of bites of the cereal. And then he would do the spit of the wine. Be like, oh, I taste, it's, it is, Riesling is pairing beautifully with this because it's, it's oaky and it's buttery and it's coating and it's complimenting the peanut butter of it. So it was really interesting to watch him do that because I was like, really? I'm not about that. I was like, I thought I was just going to some, pour some and eat it dry and drink some wine, right? But mm. apparently there's, there's two methods, so maybe we should try the two different methods. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So I have the dry and I have a whole gallon of milk here because, like, what mom doesn't have a gallon of milk? And where do you buy your milk? Because I probably buy, I have two kids, I probably buy, go through at least two gallons a week. And you've got three kids. Easily. Two She's, every two. three days. You go, so how many, so we go about, about three gallons a week? Up to five. Because yeah. if I drink some, yep. Yep. I'm going for coffee. Kelly, does Garrett still drink milk? It's like he a big drink, milk drinker. Oh, I took a lot. And do your kids, that's all right, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe try and dry first and then wet second. Okay. Um, does Garrett still drink milk? And does he drink whole milk or like, like 2%? Because I think, I guess like they, the, no, no more. The pediatricians uh, recommend that, no. Pediatricians recommend that like after year one or two that you go to two down to two percent milk. What she say she says, Oh for sure. So Kelly, what do you do? Do you do does he do whole or two percent? Sit down and eat your cereal, ma'am. Oh, she wants she thinks she wants I gave you some of this and she does she didn't eat it. You know why? Because she, she, we didn't get the ones with the crunch berries. We got just the peanut butter that the tried and true. There's no berries in there, honey. It's just look, you can look. See there's no there's no purple in there. No, it's just it's just plain. I gave them to you before and you spit them out on four. How sacrilegious, right? Okay, okay so um, do do? So we go through a lot of milk. So I think that I'm going to try what they did. They did caution that like when you're tasting the um, Captain Crunch that because of its texture, if you eat too much of the Captain Crunch, it can kind of cut the roof of your mouth, you know, mm -hmm. and when you pair it with these white wines, especially this Riesling, the Riesling is a bit, a bit acidic. Mm -hmm. So you could kind of sting like salt oh. in the wound. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to make a sacrifice. She's good. She's using a spoon. I'm like. <laughs> Wait. Wait a second, Kelly. Oh, the only drink skim now? You know, hold on. Not bad. I grew up on whole milk. Because I think that's all we had at one point. Good, right? Mm. Yeah. I grew up on skim or on whole milk because I think that's all the we had a dairy. And that was all because you know I was in, yeah. from the Midwest. Thank you. Um, and we had whole milk that was delivered to our home and we had whole milk at school yeah. and all that. And then like probably around seventh or eighth grade is when like 2% came around. And so then we were offered a choice at school of 2% and whole milk. And then my parents got into a health kick and started drinking skim milk probably when I was around, you know, 12 years old. And then I never looked back. I was always skim milk. And then I went into like the almond milks and all that kind of stuff. But then it was like, when I was trying to get pregnant, my doctor was like, no. There's actually more sugar in the 2% and the 1% in the skim milk. And you, you need the fats and you need all of this stuff that's in um, whole milk. So mm -hmm. can switch back to whole milk. More sugar, really. I know, right. And so, oh, thank you, that's Mom. That's fascinating. So I, dr I, I started drinking whole milk again. I'm like, gosh, yeah. this is like drinking cream. Like, it's so thick. But now I'm like, when I, dr like, when I, drink, when I drink skim milk and stuff, I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm drinking water. Who just jumped on? No! <gasps> Brooke is on. Hey, Brookie. How are you? Brooke is my in-house mixologist. She's one of my, my sorority sister friends. She knew how to drink in college. She, I think she's like nice. surpassed herself and is now like a professional mixologist. I love her because I'll, I'll go to her and be like, I had a really crappy day and I want to drink something sassy. Can you make me come up with a cocktail? And she'll come up with a cocktail. And, I, and nine times out of ten, I post them on my page. So when you see those cocktail mixes, those are from Brooke. Yeah. This Can is really buy? good. Mmm. Brooke, are you tasting with us? Who's that? Mmm. You can't drink now. Why not? Are you on antibiotics? Are you pregnant? You're not pregnant. Why are you not drinking with me? I want more milk. My daughter wants more milk. Why are we not drinking, Brooke? You can't drink too much because you're old. She's saying that she can't drink that much like she used to because she says she's a lightweight. Mm -hmm. This is the same girl. Brooke, were you one of us that um, used to, when we were in college, one of the, our sorority tricks was that most of us were talented enough that we could be drink, we could dance with the full like 
solo cup of beer on her head. No. Do you remember the Gizwalls used to do that? That was a trick of ours where we would like dance around with a full cup of beer on her head. Yeah. Could you do that? Did, were, you, were you able to do that, Brooke? Mm. What about you, Kelly? Do you have any good drinking stories? I'm sure you do, but you're not going to share them with us, are you? Are you actually tasting this stuff tonight with us, or are you just laughing at us? You didn't know? You, weren't, you didn't do the beer on your head thing? No. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I think that this, they this said, they said that this, you know, this pairing, the, from what I was reading, I have a feeling this is going to be my favorite pairing. But, as I always said, you want to um, pair your lightest to heaviest. So you start light and go work your way. She's literally, I, right before this broadcast, I was like, you thought I was putting poison in her mouth when I put one Captain Crunch in her mouth. She's spitting it out. She wouldn't eat it. Like, it was dirt. Now, she yeah. can't get her now hands on the like box. Candy. What's your favorite cereal? Like, if you had to pick the cereal, what would be your favorite cereal? If I had a really bad week, Lucky yeah. Charms. Which is why wine and Lucky Charms, I never thought. Wine, wine, not. Why not? Peekaboo. So, you might remember this too, Brooke. Remember, we lived in a sorority house together. There was like 50 girls of us that lived in our house. We had 200 members, but 50 of us lived in. And we had a, we had a cook. Crazy. We had a cook. And we had waiters that served us lunch and dinner. What? Yep. And we had a cook. And we and you could go into the kitchen at any time of day and you could get, you know, stuff out of the pantry or out of the cabinets or whatever. And everyone would always go mm. for the Lucky Charms. Like, it would be any hour of the day. And, like, one of our... One of our friends actually worked the kitchen. Like, she would do the dishes. She was, like, a steward. She would wash the dishes. And she had a key to the kitchen. And so it would be, like, 2 in the morning. We'd be coming back from the bars. And we would be, like, Lucky Charms. Like, I'm eating cereal. Love it. Brooke? No, you didn't do that? Were you a straight and narrow? You were a straight and narrow. Okay, Brooke, what's your favorite cereal? Kelly, what's your favorite cereal? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh -uh. This was almost on the floor. There's another one. All for you. Okay, so. We drink that. Normally when we do these wine tastings, I have a baby syrup. Because we usually have like her kids here. No, you have a bowl over here. I almost knocked over. You have a bowl over here. Come eat it. Um, we usually have a babysitter, but because she, we usually have her three kids, and I usually have my two kids, and sometimes we have another guest that's with us who has kids, and so we usually have a babysitter. I was like, oh, it's just one tonight, right? I'll park her in front of the television. Never. Parked her in front of the television, and literally, like, was in the other room with her, and I went like this to open a bag, the cereal. And she came running, and now she won't leave us alone. It's true. It's true. True story. Okay, sit down. But you have a whole bowl right here. But she's super cute, so it's really hard to... Cute and dangerous. Yeah. So. Mm. so how are we feeling about this? I'm liking this. See, I think if I had to pick my favorite cereal... This, has, this I don't is know. like the most adult one, I think, because it has I, peanut butter. I, I mean... Okay. I like flip and flop. Like, there's times yeah, where I'm, like, one. super addicted to, like, life cereal. And then there's other times where I'm, like... Yeah, bring on a peanut butter. Here you go. Peanut butter, Captain Crunch. Peanut butter, Captain Crunch. Did you know you can make? Okay, and I've done this for parties before, and it's really awesome. Any one of these cereals, like Lucky Charms, Peanut Butter, Captain Crunch, Rice Krispies, you can make Rice Krispie bars out of all of those. Like you can make a Rice what? Krispie bar out of peanut butter. It's the same recipe you do for Rice Krispies, which you just use these mm. different cereals. And I've made like you know big amazing. pans of them, and I've cut them up and stacked them up like a pyramid. Yay. And I've brought them to parties instead of like a cake. And all these different flavors. Be careful, honey. Oh, my daughter is literally Sorry, on the table. This is my life. Not at least bad. she has her clothes on. Went to Chick-fil-A today. She kept the clothes on. That was first. Good job. Usually she gets naked at whatever fast food restaurant we're at. Good job, Mom. She did start eating other people's food. And she does that too, but what are you saying, Brooke? Rice Krispie bars. Yeah, whatever. You can make them out of anything, right? Butter and marshmallows. Mm. Can't go wrong, right? Right, no? Right, she's right. done. So, our, our hubby's are... Yeah. I thank you. Our hubby... Oh. She's just going in the Lucky Charms box and eating all of the Lucky Charms. So, at some point, we should probably move on to that before she eats all the marshmallows. Mm. Um, so, our husbands are... Is your hubby working right now? Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> I can't be telling you I'm back. 
You stuck your tongue out over there. Yep. Yes, you did. Um, my her her boo's a doctor, and he's working tonight. Mm -hmm. And her kids are with the grandparents. They are. Why? Because someone's having yeah. first communion. first communion tomorrow. This is how badly she wants a cereal that she's climbed up onto the table. Can I take this to first communion tomorrow? I know. I asked her I that. I'm like, because she's got the one that's going to first communion is with second grade, right? Yes. And then she's but got. She's my oldest. Uh huh. And then she's got her other son. Two other. Who's in kindergarten. Little people to keep in love. And then she's got another one who's like. Zana's age. age. Yeah. And she's going to bring all these kids to church for one hour to, plus. And sit in to, one pew. To see this As Christian a family. Man. That's said, what we do. I said her, can you smuggle, smuggle wine in your purse? I can't say no Because not for nothing, you got in-laws there too. Right? Mm -hmm. Who's that? Hey, Heather. Hey. Four. Heather. Yeah, she's got three. She's got three kids. One going through First Communion and two other littles. Plus mm -hmm. in-laws. So, who really just he really wants to do first communion to get cake at the party after? I mean, oh, let's be honest. Are you doing St. Peter's? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Let's call it fun. So, <clears throat> hey, how's that going? I kind of been digging this Riesling. With, they do caution you about the like ripping your mouth open with the. Yeah. I see that. She's got a pink one. What is it? It's, it's, it's pink hearts. Those are like. No, it's purple hearts. What was it? There was a whole song. It was like. Super. Lucky pink hearts, yellow, like purple horseshoes. But now they got. Remember, there was only like four marshmallows when we were growing up. It was like pink hearts, blue moons, yellow stars, and something, right? There was only like four charms, right? But now they've got all these other charms, and I don't even know what the heck they are. They've got. Balloon charms and mm. stars and wow. I don't even know what this I may is. Be wrong, what is that? They that might rainbows. Have, oh, look at that. Oh, I, I think half of these are just made up so that they could put more mar yeah. marshmallows into our kids. I may so. be wrong, but they may have an all marshmallow lucky charms box on special occasions. At one point, I actually I'm gonna try this with some milk. Would you like some milk? I would actually. Thank you. She's got a rainbow. So a rainbow. um, I, are you? Here's another question about cereal. Yeah, put some milk in here. So here's another question for you. Like, I put milk in my cereal and I let my cereal sit because I like how the milk mm -hmm. tastes after. And I like it when my cereal is like a little bit soft. I, okay. I disapprove. Mm -hmm. oh, and so, and my husband says, you're making mushy mush. He's like, why are you making mushy mush out of your cereal? My husband literally kind of puts a little bit of milk in it and eats it crunchy. And I like to let it sit mm -hmm. and get mushy. What about you? Are you a crunchy cereal eater or a mushy cereal eater? See, here's me. I'm soaking. I'm soaking. I'm eating. So now, when you're eating it with milk, when you're so, drinking the wine, so is it, is, it, is it tasting funny? Because it's like you've got this, like, you know how you do, like, drink orange juice and milk and then it kind of you feels know what? weird? It's not as good with the With milk. it milk? It's cereal wine. Cereal wine? It's your way to go. No, but again, oh, she found a heart. So, but like, the guy did say, he was like, I'm, I'm not even kidding you. The guy that I saw doing it was like, and then one sip. Really? Yeah. Who's that? Kelly. Totally crunchy. Oh, you're crunchy? I know. Oh, John likes... I, Angelo is like with you here, and I'm with John on this. You know what? Stale Oreos. Hmm. What did I read about Oreos this Stale week? Oreos. Something about Oreos. Oh, you know what I read about Oreos? This is what I read about Oreos. You take Oreos, and you soak them in milk and for a while until they're soggy, and then you yeah. put them in the freezer. Oh. And then it's like eating an, like an ice cream bar, like an Oreo ice cream cookie. But they're only this big, and so you don't feel guilty for only one as opposed to the big big ones, right? Whoa, be, happy days. No, happy days. Okay, no, because they're glass, and they'll go break. They'll go break. Okay, so note to self, babysitter for one child. Okay. Hey, can you, what would you like? What would you like? Get down. We don't want you on the table because it's dangerous. You want to go to the doctor? You want to get a bump up? No, we don't want you to get a bump up. Okay, so I'm going to try it now. Oh, she actually put some of the Lucky Charm cereal in here without the marshmallows. Hmm. Just, the, just the cereal part, right? Okay, hold on. Help him, Mom. But don't you like the way the milk tastes when it's got the cereal soak in it? I like this separate. Oh, I concur. I like it better dry. With the wine, anyways. But with wine, when you add wine, it's a no-go with the milk. Well, at least with the cereal. But 
Thank you. Um, there, you know, there was for a while, like in New York, it was like the cereal bar where like you could go and you could get, it was like every cereal ever made and you could go and get all sorts of things made with cereal. And then you can do it. And it was a big, it was like kind of a big rage. I'm sure yeah. there's all sorts of other things you can do with cereal. That. You could probably bake with them. You could probably, and when we know that you can make Rice Krispies with them. But like, what else can you do with cereal? Granola. Like the bread pudding version of cereal? Mm. Think about it. I don't know about that. Like cinnamon crunch with, you know, eggs. My daughter no. just stole the entire box of Lucky Charms. <laughs> Okay. All right. This is funny. Dinner is served. What's that? Gotta go. Ron go home early. Oh, good for you, Brookie. Husband home early. We love it when they come Yay. home early. Hey, we just love it when they come home. Hello, husband. Goodbye. Hello, husband. Hi, Ron. Bye, Brooke. Love you. Kisses. I love the crescent moon. All right. Go. All right. All right. I took too much cereal. She took too much. That's dinner. Do you do this? I do. My I dad would do that in like fine restaurants. We'd be like in a fine restaurant and he'd be like, this is a very sophisticated, well-traveled man and he would do that. Or he would like, the other thing he would do is, you know, in some of the Italian restaurants, you'd have like a bottle of vinegar and a bottle of oil. Mm -hmm. He would pour vinegar in his hand, like balsamic vinegar in his hand. Really? Or he would just dunk it in bread. Like not the oil, but the vinegar. He had a thing really? for acid. Oh yeah, he was one of those. Um, okay, so we are moving on to. Did she? Oh no, I'm like, oh my gosh, did she bogart this whole thing? All right, I will tell you too that this was happened times. So don't have chip clips. That's another thing. Do you people have chip clips? Like ever since I lived in Illinois, I was like, I would grow up as a kid and we'd like have cereal. The, no, like we, I would have cereal in Illinois, and I, my mom, like never had any chip clips for like. You know, your crackers or your cereal or whatever. And so, like, our bags would be open like this in the closet. And then I would go to pour myself a, bo a bowl of cereal, put some milk in there, and then I'd see that it's, like, full of bugs. Yeah. You know, and I'd be like, oh, that's disgusting. And so I've always, ever since then, been freakish about clipping all of my bags of cereal. And even if it's just, like, like or, like, a binder clip, like, you don't have to be fancy about this. Yeah. I mean, they've got binder clips that you can buy that have magnets on them, so you can stick them to your fridge whenever you need them. But, like, I just grab my binder clips or even a rubber band. That's super smart. Because, because and it's especially at the beach, because everything goes oh. stale so fast because it's so humid. Yeah. So, I, and, I, and I, like, see other people that just kind of throw their bags mm -hmm. in the cabinet, and I'm like, oh, I just can't do that. You can tell when my husband feeds the kids cereal because his bags are literally just open. And he didn't go, did he go for the bag that was already open? Oh, no, no. no. He well, opened for the brand a new box. fresh box. And left it open. Husband. Sometimes I wonder who makes me drink more. My children or my husband. Sometimes it's a toss-up. All right, now I have to somehow... Get the box of cereal out of my daughter's hand. Mm. This might be a fight. And we're supposed to be trying that with Zinfandel. I try it, because I know not all y'all are like white wine fr friendly. Um, that some of you are like all red wine drinkers, or like my other friend Blair who only drinks champagne. And has to be Andre, that like, you know, three, go for it. Only that like, you know, $3 bottle of Andre. She's got that fully stocked everywhere she goes, and that's the only thing she drinks. Mm, but I always want to make sure we get a white or red and something else. So we did our whites with the Riesling, and I thought that that was quite good. I almost wish that the Riesling was cooler, colder. I should have put it in the freezer. But next, we're going to be doing Zinfandel with Lucky Charms. May not be full Lucky Charms. May not be the full experience, because my daughter may have eaten every single one of the marshmallows in the box. We shall see. Now I'm going light on the pores tonight. Usually I pour them way up to the top. I'm going light on the pores tonight because, you know, she's got to drive home. And I've got to be somewhat responsible. Yep. And when in reality, I'm probably going to close this 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 Facebook Live down and probably finish off the ball by myself. But I have to be responsible because I've got a little, a little one with me. But you know what? Did you see this awesome, awesome wine glass? Did you see that picture I put I on did. Facebook? I That's Kelly. It, meant, it yes. said mom, mommy therapy. I have my, like awesome sis-in-law kelly she sent me because she said no she sent me because she saw it my my daughter let go that would be my daughter that would be my daughter sorry um 
that my sister-in-law Kelly had sent me this awesome um, wine glass that says mommy therapy on it. And I absolutely love it. And it's gigantic. It's like two times the size of that one. And I love it. It says mommy, th th mommy therapy on it. So excuse me as I have like shaky camera effect, but my daughter broke my tripod in her zest and her zest for being a toddler who is going to be three soon. Crazy. I know three. Are you ready for it? Well, yes and no. Okay. So for all of you that may not know this, I talked about it. Wait, let me get the cereal. Pause at the top. Pause okay, it. Pause at the top. So this should all, be good. For all of you that have not seen, I'm just going to take it for a second. I'll bring it right back. For all of you that have not seen um, my previous Facebook Live that I did earlier this week, I'm giving it right back. Calm down. I just got to get some cereal in here. Um, two weeks ago, my husband, Angelo, okay, Reader's Digest version, got laid off. And so, you know, we're totally okay. He's got a good severance. And perfect. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. He's got a good severance. Box. He's Thank got you. a good severance. And it's all good. It's probably best for our family, anyways, because he was working too much and too long and for too many hours and missing too much from his family. Um, so I think it was probably best for everybody that. I mean, he got laid off not because of performance. It's just, it was like, you know, dollars and cents. This company was. Not doing so well, um, so they were laying off all of the highest paid uh, executives, and so he was, he was one of those, and it happens, and he's totally okay with it. So Monday is his last day, but so what we, like he literally came home, and we're like popping the champagne bottles, and we're like, yeah, like now we get to kind of start a new life, but that means that we have to move and leave Greenville, so we don't know when that's going to happen, or how fast it's going to happen, or, I mean, it could happen like really fast, because like literally the day he got laid off, he was getting phone calls. You know, for job interviews or, you know, offers and such. So we could be leaving quite quickly or we could be here for a while. But at least it is before the next school year. Yeah. Can so, you imagine if it was in August? I know, but even if that it was in August, my kid's six. Well, I, yeah. You know, true. my kid's going to be in first grade. And my yeah, other daughter, grade, she's two. Not so. so bad, but anyway, so like, you know, whenever someone has like a huge milestone or like a big victory, what do they say? I'm going to Disneyland, <laughs> right? So my husband, when we get, you know, he gets laid off, and he's like, well, "Now I'm gonna have all this time," and I'm like, oh, "Our daughter, our, or she's gonna be turning three. You gotta go." And hey, so we're like, you, we're you gonna, could get her in three. Though. I know we can get her in three. I got my daughter in three, and she's almost four. I know, I know. And so I said, "We can take her to we, before Enzo turned three. My son, we took him to Disney, and it was like his best day of his whole life." He was literally at, at the parks from like 7 a.m. until 2 a.m. because we had extended park hours, and he stayed up the whole thing. He and it was like his best day in his entire life. The so letter. we're like we were talking about bringing Zana before she turned three, but he was working and he couldn't get time off, and so now he's like, mm. "Let's do it." And so like this was last week. Here's us like, okay, we're gonna drive, and like I call, I just bought tickets last night to Disney, and I was like calling and making reservations for you know. Did you do Bippity Boppity Boutique with their hair and the princesses and no, all that? But... Yeah, and like I was like fast passing all the tickets and like making all the reservations. None of the kids know yet. It's a complete surprise. So Yay. we're gonna go to Disney. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna drive. Because we're in North Carolina, it's like a 10-hour drive, and that's not that's not far. Ten no. Hours. No. Yeah. No. Totally okay. But yeah, so um, Disney, it is a magical place. And it better be for the price that we pay. Alright, so we're on to Lucky Charms. Okay, we're doing Lucky Charms and all of its new flavors that they just made up because they wanted to give us marshmallows. So, and they say, they said um, Lucky Charms and Zimbabwe. I get a pink one. You got a pink one? Does the pink one taste different? Nope. They said, kind of when I was researching this, that they weren't too sure about this, but that, believe it or not, the marshmallows and stuff, Kind of had this like coating that was a mm. sugar coating that really actually brought out the flavor of the Zinfandel. I tasted something with that. I've never tasted before with this one. Mm. Mm. Fascinating. You, taste you know it. what I taste? Quiet. <laughs> mm. I haven't had that in a while. Mm. Yeah. I kind of like this. How do you feel about this? I like it. I have another friend on Facebook. Her name is Sammy. And she sells wines and stuff. And so when she saw that I was doing this wine tasting, she was mm. like, I don't know. Those wines that you chose are kind of, they might be too sweet to pair with these other sweets. 
Um, oh, is that you, Sandy, that just gave me the thumbs up? Okay, she's saying, I don't know, it might be, these sweets might be too sweet to pair with these, these, these. And I said, ah, eh, you know, I did some research and this is what they're saying. I don't know. I'm, we'll see. We'll see, right? So what do you think of this? I, I, this is even better. I really? Didn't, I didn't think it could get better. But are you a red or a white? Mm. Both. Sweet. She's sweet a, white or sweet red. She's a sweet. I'm a, I'll drink anything you put in front of me, but I do agree with her that I think that the sweet in this, the marshmallows, I don't, if the marshmallows weren't here, I think it would taste completely different. Mm -hmm. But the sweet in the marshmallows kind of cuts the tannins in the mm -hmm. red. Fascinating. Now, when you're tasting this, do you have like a mouthful of cereal and then you swallow the wine? Or I you... know, I, I, I chew and swallow and then I drink. Am I still stuck? I don't know. I don't think there's any kind of etiquette off. when we're drinking wine and eating cereal. I think we can kind of make that up as we go along. So, all right, there's something that's on my mind that I want to talk about. I'm gonna put my wash now, by three. She originally came up when we were you know, getting, setting up times and stuff. She said, yeah. I can only be here till 5.40. And then she walked in the door and she said, nope, plan has changed. Yeah. Ooh, I can stay yeah. longer. I said, how long? She was probably till 7 because that's when, was it, that when the movie's over? Her kids are watching. Wa Wally's on. Wally's on right now. Wally. Pizza's, up. Pizza's being ordered. Pizza's being ordered. Wally's on. And then at 7 o'clock, that should all be over. And then she's going to be home for like bedtime routine. So she's got to longer than I thought. So I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, so I was thinking, I saw this video this week and I put it on my Facebook page. Um, Dina Blizzard, she is one funny mother. She's like a comedian. She was that woman that did that whole big thing. She was like drunk in a Target and she was like, do teachers want yellow pencils? Oh, Give me yellow her. pencils. Yeah, she's like, you want a folder? Do you want an ottoman? You want some luggage? You need a candle. You need some aromatherapy because you're teaching my children. You know, she's awesome. She's really funny. She um, goes live a lot and um, she went live this week and she was like, you know, she does a lot of her broadcasts like from her car. She's like a professional comedian. She does like, she's on the road. She's it's like, the best place. Yeah, she was like in a CVS parking lot crying, um, super upset because she had just come from an IEP meeting. Do you know what an IEP meeting is? I don't know what IEP stands for, but a lot of the women that I know have to go through this with their children. Mm -hmm. An IEP is like, what is this? Do you know what it stands for? Does Not. that, do any of you know what it stands for? Individual... Uh, education plan? I, yes. I don't even know what we, someone Google it. Heather, where are you when I need to Google? Um, it stands for something, but it's basically like you, you get these IEP meetings or these IEP testings when your kid is on the borderline of like having special needs. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I don't even know what's, her child might have ADHD or something like that, but like this woman's like was literally coming out of this IEP meeting and she got in her car and was in the CVS parking lot crying, being like, I don't understand. She's like, I know my child has a, a disability, but if they could just test her a different way, they would see that she just learns differently. Like I'm not saying, I'm not disputing that she has a special need, but could they just modify their teaching methods a little bit to help her as opposed to like throwing her into something that's not going to work for her. You know, and I have lots of friends that are, you know, have the IEP situation going on in their life right now or have the, like, my kid has special needs or stuff like that. And I know me personally, like, I'm kind of teetering and tottering right now. I'm thinking, like, my child might have special needs because I keep getting these notes from my teachers about things that I need to work on with my kid, like with Enzo, my son, who's six. So I'm thinking, like, is it really my son that needs to work on this? Is he not getting it? Or is maybe they're teaching him a level beyond what they should be or is he just a different type of learner or like at what point are they going to come to me and say we need to hold him back or we need to go to IEP you know so but I'm, maybe I'm way ahead of myself and maybe these teachers are just so I'll talk to my other mommy friends who are teachers and they're like really your teachers are saying that he doesn't know this he's in kindergarten they shouldn't be teaching that until first grade so it's no big deal if he doesn't know it now because he's not supposed to know it until first grade. 
So I don't know. I know what to, she's got three kids, and she's much better at this stuff than I am. What, what's your experience? What do you think? Well, I will say of the two that are in school, it's totally different kids' experiences in terms of how they learn and how they interact with children. Yeah. Which is, I didn't know that was, that, that was possible. And we're actually at a school because we want different ways of learning. Not just put, I don't want to get myself in trouble, not just put some of this work to another time to have you finish it later because obviously you're not doing it right now. So obviously you'll do it later and we'll just push back. Push you along, right. Push back and keep. Keep holding you back until you get it. Keep trying to get that work done that day instead of. Let it go. Move on to something else. Not do that work or change it or, you know what I mean. Yeah. And I feel like. that's why we're there. And I feel like too, like I I, I may have mentioned this on one of my other Facebook lives, that we didn't know that my son had a vision impairment until like Christmas. So my son from like when he started in August until Christmas, basically couldn't see anything while his peers could see and were learning everything. Mm -hmm. So now since January 1st, He's gotten classes and he can see things better, but he still has to make up for those four or five months that he missed that his peers are ahead of him. So I don't know, and it's more than just a vision thing, I'm sure. My son just learns differently. But at the same time, like I said, I talked to my other teacher mom friends and they're like, that's, why are they teaching him that now? That's not till next year. Don't even worry about that or, you know, or whatever. Or they'll say, you know what? That's craziness. Like, you know, and then I'll read things online that'll say things like homework, uh, we get we get homework, and I'm thinking I don't I didn't have homework until I was well into like primary school, and I'm thinking my parents never helped me with homework, and I talk to these other moms that are also teachers, and they're like it's ridiculous that we have to as parents have to spend so much time at home with our kids doing homework. That's what the teachers are supposed to be doing at school, right? And and I'm saying that I'm quoting. I'm not. I so applaud every teacher that has ever walked the face of this planet because they're doing something I could never ever ever do, but. We never did that growing up, and we made it out okay. So why is it now that our children have to do all of this homework and are expected to do these things that are above their pay grade, and then they're evaluated on that? It just seems odd to me, and I feel Mm -hmm. like I don't know if my child really does need special attention or special tutoring or special help, or if it's just, you know, because then other teachers will say, don't worry about it. He's fine. They all learn at their, their own paces. And then just by second grade, they level out. Like, don't worry about it until you get into like I've second grade. I've heard sixth grade. I'm hearing sixth grade? I mean, that's what this older neighbor said. He, you know, was in the educational system. And she's like, I don't know why everyone freaks out. I'm just so saying. I got, like I, so I sent um, an email to my son's teacher. Well, both my kids' teachers, but. Yeah. The Zimbabwe t- is totally different without the marshmallows. Marshmallows are what do it. Yeah. No, Unfortunately, just, they're all gone. Yeah, they're, uh, my daughter probably has exactly. eaten every single marshmallow. Yeah. That's why she's so quiet. She's sitting in front of television eating all the marshmallows out of the box. Anyway, so I wrote a note to my son's uh, uh, or my kid's teacher saying, hey, FYI, don't tell him it's a secret, but we're going to go to Disney next week and we're going to miss three days of school. And so if there's homework that you need me to work on with them, let me know. My daughter's, my daughter's teachers are like, just go. Go ahead. My son's teachers are like, sure, we'll send you some homework, and you can work on it. Wait, with wait, him. let me guess, let me guess. Eighteen pages. I don't know. I don't even know where. Oh, it you is. didn't get it yet. Uh uh-uh. uh Oh. Oh lord. Okay, so apparently I'm looking into eighteen pages, but so, so yeah. So they said, well, yeah. Come, well, you know what? And, and thanks for writing us and letting us know. We'll send you some homework that you can work on with your kid, because you know, three days is gonna make or break him. But so, okay, fine. I'll be willing to do that so that I can take him for three days to celebrate my daughter's birthday and my husband's layoff. Okay. So, great. so, um, and then she said, "Well, while I have you here, mm, that's never good. Mm, mm. While I got you here, can you come in for a meeting? Because oh, I want to no. talk to you about. I'm sorry, your son. You need some more. I know." And I was like, ooh. Wait, wait, we're going, we're going to move on to pour. Oh, okay. I'm so, sorry. I'll pour, I'll pour more of that one. Mm. And so when I talked about something, I said, mm, okay. okay. And of course, this is all going on via email. And she said, well, you know what? Your son Enzo is making great progress. I'm like, yeah, <coughs> Vision will do that for somebody, right? Yeah. Vision will do that for someone. No kidding. 
Yeah, he's making great progress. And we don't want him to lose that momentum over the summer. Uh, so no. can we meet so that you can come up with like lesson plans that you can continue to work with him over the summer? And I'm okay with that. But at the same time, I'm not going to spend every day of my kid's summer break working on sight words. The latest right now that they're writing me about, I, I swear, like at least once a week I get some sort of email or communication between one of my two kids that I need to work on with them. But the latest is, right now in kindergarten, they're learning the difference between a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter, mm -hmm. right? And they do this by looking at worksheets. So it's a worksheet with black and white pictures of these coins. Yeah. And my son is supposed to recognize these black and white pictures I of these just, coins. I should just not be on camera. I'm I know. Get my head over here. I know. And he's supposed to know. I mean, like, he knows that, like, a dime is 10, and he knows a quarter is 25. But, like, when you look at it on paper, it's very different than having the coin in your hand. And so their latest is that I have to work with him on these coins. Um, and like the value of them and recognizing them because the, he needs to learn to recognize the picture and recognize the size and recognize the value of these coins. I'm thinking to myself, is my son going to be going out and buying groceries at age six? Like, does he really need to know this right now? On black and white paper. On black and white paper. So my babysitter is really great. I love my babysitter. And she, she said, you know what? I had to learn differently too. And she's like, you know what? You, you just need to break up the break up the coins. She's like, put the worksheet down and then like put the coins over, like the actual coins over the drawings on the pages and maybe that'll help them. She always has really great tips. She's like a college student. She's really great. But I'm like, yeah. But like I'm thinking to myself, so my kid qualifies for some sort of special ed or like yeah. modified education program because he doesn't know how to recognize a coin. Yeah. And that's okay. You know what? Maybe that's the level that he's supposed to be at. But I'm just like, Really? Really? Oh like, oh did you know what a penny was, like, when you were five and six no. years old? No. And, well, I, I, perhaps, but not on command. A paper. Right, not on paper. And command. And, and maybe, maybe, and maybe they're in the classroom showing them these coins, and I don't know, and maybe I'm being, I'm speaking completely out of turn. Okay, we're moving on to um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Or, you know, if you're like me, the generic version. Um, and that's supposed to be paired with a port, and if you've never, have you ever had a port before? Oh, the Lidl version. It is a Lidl version. No, not Lidl. It's it's um. I'm sorry. Aldi. 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 I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not I did a Aldi broadcast this week about how much I love Aldi. I, love Aldi. I think this entire box of like Lidl. cinnamon toast crunch is like a dollar. Um, yeah, I know. cinnamon toast crunch. So, pause. Wine. This is not your average bottle of water. Water bottle. What happened was that I had this really awesome, very aged bottle of port. And I went to open the bottle, and it was so aged, the cork cracked off in my hand. Oh, no. Um, and so I had to look at that. Oh, no. Do you see that? That's even That sad. was sad. And so my husband had to, like, carve the cork out of here, and we had to, like, strain the cork bits out of it. We had to put it into sad. something else, so it's in a water bottle. So if you ever come to my house and you see some water bottles like this in my cabinet, may not be water, especially if there's no mm. label on it. I might have some vodka in it. Special juice. Or port. But this is, they, they recommended that we do Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but they, we're going to put them in smaller glasses because that's that's a proper for a port. Mm. Now, port is really strong and really sweet. Also, on a, a um, Navy, my dad was in the Navy, like an admiral. In the Navy. Not, or something. He was officer. I feel like big like, officer. He was, but he was a big officer. If you don't, officer. not small officer. If you don't, Lieutenant Commander. There you go. Mm. Um, if you offer your guests port that means you want them to stay after dinner but if you don't offer them port that me that's your cue to leave the dinner is that that's dismissed. a military thing navy navy thing Ish. okay well apparently so, so apparently i'm not dismissed she's thank gonna, you she's for, gonna roll up thank a, you for letting she's me gonna stay. fall asleep on my couch all right so port now this is they they recommended to pair this cinnamon toast crunch also known as generically cinnamon crunch squares with um a, a tawny port. Do you know the difference between a tawny and a ruby? I'm sorry, a, a ruby Goodness, port. No, do, you, do, not. do you know what the difference is between ruby and tawny? No, please tell me. A ruby port is a young port. It's a port that's no more than seven years old. It's about seven years old. And a tawny port is usually more like 14 plus. Mm -hmm. Now, ports are very sweet. They're very thick. I prefer the tawnies because I think they're, I'm sorry, I prefer the rubies, the younger ports, because they're a little bit, I think they're a little bit sweeter. 
Um, but they said that like when you pair, <laughs> she's, choking, she's probably choking on a marshmallow. Uh, the, the, the Ruby port, it's going to be, it's, it's going to have some, it's going to coat. It's going to have a coating to it, right? But it's, um, they said that it pairs really nicely with the cinnamon and cinnamon toast. Well, brush. try this because I'm usually not a port fan. So maybe it oh, will make me a... Do you not, have you had port before? I have, but I mean, it's, it's an acquired... I'm not a sherry fan. Like I don't, I think yeah. sherry is too much, but port, we'll I can this. drink. If you don't drink it, don't worry, because it'll go somewhere. I'm going to try it with this. Mmm, dollar cinnamon crunch. I agree. The cinnamon, it almost like, it's caramely. It's caramely. Mmm, I like that. That'd be a good dessert. Mm -hmm. They said, this is a dessert. And they were like, you know like, what? Like people that, I talked to are like this is a this is a definitely like cinnamon, finisher cinnamon tart yeah like port. almost like a almost creme brulee mm. I like it I want more of it I'm actually even using Good. a spoon I was just anticipated that I was gonna be eating it by a handful out of the box we got really sophisticated for you people mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah back to the whole like IEP thing so I felt so bad for Dina on her when she was on the rockets like crying in the parking lot she's like. Would you please just work with me? Like, could you please just modify your methods just a little? And they wouldn't. They wouldn't bend. Um, and I kind of feel that, that I don't know if strange. that is like, if that's just the education system or if that's really common. And like, how do you be an advocate and how you stand up for your child, but also be realistic? Because I'm sure these parents are looking at us going, oh, it's just because you're biased because you're their mother. But then there's another part of it that goes, but I am their mother. And I know them best. And you see them for eight hours of the day. And I've seen them since the day they took the first breath. And I know that they're going to learn differently. And I know that they're going to, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like potty training. Like, yeah. okay, so what? My kid's three years old and they're not potty trained. Like, you know what? They're still going to go off to college. And they're still, you know, you know they're still going to live. They're going to get potty trained at some point. You know, that deserves That's another right. bite of cereal. Well, that's a hard one. No, I wonder if it's a private versus public fight. Because not everyone can do private. I don't know. But. Is it a public versus private thing? What do you think? Is it like a public school thing? Depending on the private. Or a private school thing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We were also talking today about how there's also what sorts of controversy that's going on like about what you can and cannot say in schools. Like, you can't pray in schools. And you can't, like, some of them, they don't even do the pledge because it's a pledge that they just give out advice into their, you know, I, and they talk about God and the pledge and say, well, that's, that's, that's discriminatory. We shouldn't talk about God and the pledge and we should never say a prayer. And, and there was a school that was, like, Methodist and there was people saying that you should bow for the horns for the Muslims or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's like, okay, I just think that like, and, and then they talk about, they talk about Kwanzaa and you talk to some other people that are, you know, of, they're from that part of the world. Like, we don't even know what you're talking about. Like Kwanzaa. What is that? You know? So like, when is it like enough is enough? Like, let's just accept it all and not fight everything. Right? I mean, we used to have Christmas parties in public school when I was little. I mean, what's the big deal? I remember like when I used to, when I was managing like. I, I would be managing events in the month of December and we couldn't even have Christmas, like we would go to a hotel that would have like Christmas trees out, with like lights on the Christmas trees. And we would have to hide them, not hide them, but like pull them out because we thought that that might offend someone who might not be Christian. But I kind of feel like that's so mainstream now. But it's so not a Christian now. thing. It's so, well, it started Christian, but it's so it's mainstream now, was. right? It is mean. Well, I know that Christmas... No, let me get this right. The Christmas tree tradition was started by Queen Victoria in the 1800s. If you said it was started yesterday, I'd be like, yes. Anyways, it, I think it was, it's a German tradition, not necessarily. Okay, I'm sorry. Not no, by Queen Victoria Queen. is not German. No, 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 but I'm, so, okay, let me, it was started in, it was always in Germany. The, the Christmas tree. It was a German tradition. Was it? Came into England through Queen Victoria's husband. 
That would be Albert. I've been watching the PBS. Yeah, she didn't watch a lot of PBS. The PBS uh, Queen I've been Victoria. watching a lot of Netflix. And then, so that's when the, the Christmas tree itself was kind of introduced into the regular household. Yeah, but at the time they were, like, putting lights on there. There were, like, candles and stuff. But it had some, the tree had something to do with roots and Christianity. Yes and, and the no. lights, too. Yes and no. You know how we were talking about how, I don't like, know. Captain Crunch is, like, supposed to cut the roof of your mouth? Oh, that's... Cinnamon Toast Crunch is cutting more. Mm. Maybe it's just because it's like the third one on the bench. I love your daughter. She's cracking me up with the she's, water running. She's obsessed Anyways, with water. I, I'm water just, running my water. point is that I don't think the Christmas tree is necessarily a Christian symbol specifically only Christian. You know what I mean? Mm. I think people are just getting way too serious about pleasing everybody and they just got to no, know you're not going to please them. Okay. What are we doing, y'all? Connection available. Sounds like we we're bumping in and out of connection. So there you go. Oh, there we go. So I see that we've got about six minutes left on our broadcast. What do we want to talk about in parting words? Let's let's summarize what we've learned today about our serial experience. If we had to, I'm talking with my mouth open because we're moms. Notice that there was no Cheerios affected in the recording of this video. Mm. Save the Cheerios. Save the Cheerios are for the kids. Um, we've upgraded. This is mom stuff. So, if you had your number one pick, what would be your number one pick? I'm going to pick my drunk pick. Like if I want to get drunk. That would be... The drunk pick. The drunk pick. Because there are different kinds of picks. There's different picks, depending on how you feel. The drunk pick. What's the, I'm going to get Peanut drunk Peanut butter. Pick. Peanut butter crunch. and Riesling. Peanut butter and Riesling is that I want to get drunk. Yeah. I want to get drunk and screw. <laughs> Remember that? That was a Garth. Was it not Garth Brooks? Yeah. I'm asking her like she even. She's know. like 10 years younger than me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It sounds familiar. And my non, my sophisticated pick is so, sophisticated cinnamon crunch. Notice. What about you? The wine levels here. Well, because I'm being sophisticated. Just yeah, she's it. super sophisticated. Um. So her think hers her favorite is the Riesling. No, well, that her drunk favorite is the Riesling and peanut butter and Capricorn. Mm -hmm. What's your next favorite? Cinnamon crunch. Cinnamon and toast the, crunch and the pour. Have an after dinner treat and mm -hmm. there you go. And I gotta tell you, you don't pour a port like you pour a red or a white. It's like a sipping wine. It's yeah. an after dinner cordial type of wine. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet and usually. They call it a port because it's technically, you know how like the champagnes are from the Champagne region of France and Cava is from, you know, regions in Spain. Ports are from Portugal. But it is a, it is a sweeter, stronger, thicker wine. And it's not something that you chug like in a big wine glass. It is a sipping kind of thing. Very sweet, very good with desserts. And I think that's why the cinnamon pairs so good with mm -hmm. it. They are great cinnamon creme brulee. Yeah, like and I don't even know at this point which one my favorite is because I'm kind of really into this port cinnamon thing, kind of. But I kind of think I would tend to agree with her. Like, I think that uh, although I love me some Lucky Charms, which are now without marshmallows, because my daughter can pick them all out of the box. I think that I think my first will be the port, and then my second would be the peanut butter crunch. But if you asked me when I was twenty years old, <laughs> it would probably be like Rice Krispies and Boone's Hill. Yeah, Rice Krispie treats. Or Arbor Mist. Arbor Mist. <laughs> <laughs> Love that stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm taking my last sip of my port. You notice how we didn't swirl port. Mm. You don't, you don't swirl pork because it's just too. You can, I mean, like you can, but like you can see how thick the legs are. So thick. You know, they talk about the legs. The leg, when you, okay, like wine this. is going to walk away. I'm right, like you're supposed out. to swirl your thing around here like this, and then you can see how it like drips down the side. And you can tell how thick the one is supposed to be by how big the, the legs are, like the drips are. Big legs. No one ever see anybody kind of like swirling a pork because it's really like syrupy. Do you swirl some cinnamon crunch? Yeah, let's swirl some cinnamon crunch. Okay, <laughs> swirling some cinnamon crunch to you and yours. Cheers to you. Happy cereal. Happy, Happy cereal. wine. 
some fun on a Friday night. Dinner is served. Enjoy. And I don't know what we're going to do next week. What are we going to taste next week? I don't know. i got to find something. I don't know. Possibilities are endless. Maybe I flip-flop it. We should, we should make over makeover season. I know. Five minute makeover. We were talking about this. Because, like, okay, so I saw this thing on, like, the internet. And it was like, oh, mom's mom makeover hacks, right? And I was like, really? Mom makeover hacks? It wasn't even that. It was like mom makeup hacks or mom hacks or for beauty or whatever. I'm like, okay. I, I went out to all of my friends on my page and I was like, y'all, do you have any hacks? Because like, mm. it's a good day when I brush my teeth. So chapstick is my go-to. Mm. Not a lot of people are coming back to me with like, oh, I use this stick for cover up or I use this lotion or whatever. But I was like, okay. So she was kind enough to say, let's do a makeover. Maybe we need to make over. I, so these are the two. Not a make. You don't need to make over. It's a make up. Make upper. Make upper. Make upper. Make. I feel like makeover is saying that somebody is not. Oh look, my daughter just brought me a handful of um, cereal with no marshmallows. You don't really need it, but it, it's a bonus. Feature. No, I do need it, and I'm totally okay with that. But you know what? I think I wonder if we could. Okay, so I'm two things. These are my two goals. One, I want to do a wine tasting in our wine shop here in Greenville. Notice I say our one wine shop here in Greenville. Um, and two is that I would love to do like, I wonder if we could go to like Merle Norman here in town and like have them do makeovers while we drink. But I, I bet think Alta would do it. Or Alta would do it. They're super fun at Alta. But I wonder if like we're going to end up looking like painted horse. Are we going to look like painted horse? Like I don't really need the cat wings and all that. Then don't go to Alta. Then don't go to Alta. <laughs> we're all about the. I didn't say that. She did say it. I did say it. Okay, my daughter dumped some of her cereal on the table, mm. and then she's sitting on the table, so I guess that's our cue to go. But happy Friday, mom. Happy Friday. You survived. I, I hope you I served some. some milk. She wants more milk. Honey, there's lots of things that I want more of. Hey, I want more. Yay. Yay. Celebrate. Celebrate. It's going to be summertime before I know it, folks. And beach bodies, right? <laughs> 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 you're funny I know you're funny right <laughs> I say that because I'm like I told myself oh maybe you know what before this Disney trip I'm not going to drink anything I'm going to be good no. I'm going to eat clean I'm going to like my daughter just took the entire bag and, yeah okay probably time for us to go yeah. happy Friday just give me an happy empty Friday. box I feel like she, you're such a giver oopsie, oopsie. sorry <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. Bye. Drink on. Bye.